Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today what we're talking about, you still laugh at that? <laughs> today what we're talking about is shadow inventory, okay? It's basically, Florida's frightening shadow inventory of homes, sh should we be worried? Okay. So basically, that's what we're talking about today, shadow inventory. And a lot of people are saying, what the hell is shadow inventory? So basically, I got this written down, so I'm gonna just read it. The concept of sh shadow inventory refers to homes that are, that are not currently listed for sale, but could hit the market in the future. This inventory can include properties that are in foreclosures, okay. owned by banks, REOs, properties, or those where homeowners are behind on a mortgage payment but have not yet entered the foreclosure process. In this case, Florida, this hidden inventory of homes could have significant implications for the future of the real estate market here in Florida. Plus, across the whole country, okay? Like, also, shadow inventory is stuff that's not being advertised, but is for sale. Like, remember I was talking to you about in uh, another video, I was saying, hey, I went to a build, build site to do a new construction mm -hmm. inspection, and I thought it was just, you know, I did, I looked it up on Zillow or wherever I looked it up, and it was just like one house for sale. Then I went there, and it was literally 16 houses for sale. Right, that's how builders typically would do it. They would just have one, one property listed if they're gonna put it on the MLS. They don't necessarily put every single house on the MLS that's for sale, so then it's just a starting point and then you go to the build center. So, so they just what they, they do it just so it doesn't, you know, doesn't look bad or something? No, it's just the way they've always done it. I've never seen it where they haven't done it like that um, because they're just developing out the community. So things come off, come up and come down so fast. Think about how much work that would be to take it on, take it off, update the MLS all the time. It's just so it's one property, you know, because they're building out an entire community. Look at some of those big developments that it's like 10,000 houses. You're going to put in, you're going to do 10,000 entries into you know, the MLS, but that's what I mean. Te like, technically, that's considered shadow inventory. It's going to hit the market. Well, yeah, but you know that that, in, that development is coming. So you know that that inventory is going to come through. I would think some shadow inventory would also more or less be, um, you know, some properties maybe where people are sitting on the sideline that they're going to want to sell, but they're just waiting on interest rates to come down. Uh, you know, because they got to offset things. So, so let's, you just mentioned something, inventory, in, interest rates coming down. So the rate just cut the federal funds rate by 50 basis point. You know, my two cents on that is... Which is a half a percent. Which is, yeah, which is a half percent. But my two cents on that is they know something we don't because I said in previous videos that they will not cut the federal funds rate right before an election because it'll look political. But I was wrong and they did it. Okay. Right, but um, Jerome Powell did say over, you know, this is just an ad lib, but he was saying in past um, press releases and things like that, that because we've been at a high interest rate, we haven't had a cut in eight months, nine months or more. We, they haven't moved the uh, federal funds rate down and it's just been sitting stagnant. Yet we've seen interest rates come down despite that you know, the uh, federal funds rate remaining the same. But he's in, he did say that holding that federal funds rate up high for too long can also be detrimental. So he kind of started laying the groundwork, kind of when we started talking about it, you know, to like, hey, we, we kind of have this coming. So I don't know, we'll have to see how this pans I, I think, out. I think they, they're between a rock and a hard place. And I think a lot of people are gonna call them out saying it's political, you know, but I think at the same time is the job market, I think is in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think they see that, that the job market is in trouble. And before, I did some little research, and before every major recession, pretty much, eight of the last 10 or something like that, they did a rate cut right before a recession hit. And I think a recession is considered a recession two negative quarters in a row. So basically okay. GDP quarters in a row. Yeah. So. And they're saying that unless they redefine it, <laughs> unless they redefine it, like like they like they always do. But they have been. Uh. But I know personally a few people that are putting their homes up on the market that um, bought at the peak, and for you know they have buyer's remorse. Right. So that's shadow inventory because they said they're putting it up on the market, you know, come right after the holidays for the new years, they're gonna put it up 
for sale. So that's shadow inventory. Foreclosures is shadow inventory. These investors are these banks. And don't forget, during the pandemic, they had a moratorium on foreclosures. Right. Yeah, that got lifted years ago. Well, it wasn't years ago. It's it got been a couple of years since has, the moratorium. Has maybe in Florida, but some places it's only been like a year. Yeah, we've been almost two years since they've lifted that moratorium here anyway. Um, you know, and we still haven't seen this crazy spike. We're still below, nationally, we're still below the uh, foreclosures, even starts of foreclosures, which is a good thing. We don't want that. Um, because people have so much equity in their homes, I think that a lot of the foreclosures are being staved off, at least temporarily, uh, because even people who did buy in the pandemic, depending on exactly when you bought, people are still, you know, taking advantage of that, you know, 30, 40, and 50% increase in, in the value. So they're not necessarily gonna go into foreclosure. Maybe they'll start the process, but they're able to get their home listed or sold, which then pays off their debt, you know? So in your opinion, how big do you think that this shadow inventory is going to be? At least, I know you can't speak for the whole nation, but how, how big do you think this problem is going to be for Florida for with an influx of homes coming in? I don't think it's a problem, to be honest. I think we're just creating a new term. Um, if we're trying to just talk about foreclosures, maybe that's one thing. I think we do have some people that are sitting on the sidelines, both buyers and sellers. I think that's a reality, is that we have buyers and sellers both sitting on the sidelines, waiting to see what happens with the election, um, even though there's not a huge you know, historically, there's not a huge impact to, to real estate as when it comes to the election year, but it does affect it a little bit. And every little, at this point, everything's so wound tightly, every little bit helps, in my opinion. Um, Do you think it was smart for them to cut a, a half a point before they reached the 2% goal for I just don't know inflation? that we're ever going to reach the 2% goal. So now it's 25 you know. And, you know, and people, you know, some people were making some comments on, on this channel mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know what, we're back. We got it down to 2%. That's 2% of, or 2.5% from what the prices were a year ago. But they're still 20% to 50% higher they're than they were still higher. Three to four years ago. Right. And the thing is that, we, you know, with the, the inflation rate, the rate of things going up, it's definitely got to cool off because people are having, the ones that obviously, we've talked about this before too, is the people that are affected the most are the ones that are hardest strapped, obviously. You know, so when it comes to the housing, transportation, you know, food and things like that, I just think that we needed a break. You know, we can call it political, we can call it whatever, whatever the case is, but people needed a break. Um, and I don't, it's when it comes to real estate, I'm not sure that that half a percent is really going to make that big of a difference when it comes to mortgage rates right away. It may be that it'll it definitely maybe take an effect down the road, but I think that was kind of already baked in because you know, I were talking about this yeah. before we started that look where we came. The federal funds rate has not been changed in months and months yet interest rates have gone from the eights down into the sixes. sixes. Yeah. And nothing changed from the federal funds rate. So that tells me that there's a possibility that this is baked in and everybody kind of already like the CME group, which is a group that watches and predicts um, the, the Fed rate changes, that it's kind of already baked in. So where you're going to see more effect is probably going to be on credit cards, you know, and, and things like that. Yeah, car you loans. Know, car loans. So, hey, do me a favor while we got you guys um, watching this. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor, consider subscribing. It takes a second, just hit that button over to the side, hit the thumbs up and share the video. But Bill, let's get back to foreclosures. Okay, the job market, I think they're propping it up right now. I think that things are gonna hit the fan, as mm -hmm. they say, um, after the election. Mm -hmm. They're going to do everything they can to keep it out of the news or, you know, the companies right. to hold on or they're going to do whatever they have to do. Right. That makes sense. And, you know, this this um, them cutting the federal funds rate gives a, like a little booster shot into some companies because they could borrow money cheaper for equipment upgrades or whatever they want to do. Yeah, hold on. And people now might spur and buy you know the car they're waiting for because rates are a little bit cheaper or buy the boat or buy stuff okay 
I just think it's just a temporary band-aid. It's like having a freaking shot, you know, like a little shot just to keep you going for a little while. Right. I do think that, well, me personally, I think we're in a recession now, but, you know, every, everybody disagrees with me with that. But do you think, I think more and more people are going to lose their houses to foreclosures, especially the ones that bought it at the peak. The ones that bought five years ago, six years ago, before the pandemic, not so much. It's gonna be a hard, remember, 50% of the country, 50 plus some odd percent, give or take, I don't remember the stat. Uh, we were looking for the, uh, the, the data that just came out uh, yesterday. See, so yesterday or the day before, uh, I was looking for the data so that we could talk about this because you and I started chatting about it in the car. But, um, you know, there's, there's just more than, I think it's more than 50% of the U.S. people don't have a mortgage. Right. So we have to take that and, you know, we have to think about that a little bit. And then this is where I wanted this, the numbers because it was a huge number of people that still had equity in their homes. So if they did get into a pinch, they could sell their house mm -hmm. and not go into foreclosure. Of course. So, and that was, I want to say it was, in the, it was, it was a high percentage. I'll, I'll find the data and we'll talk about it. But it was a large number. And it was it was an actual surprisingly large number. So those people those people are good. They're yeah. safe. But the people that bought with ten percent down during the peak two years ago, three years ago, well, they, just don't sell your house because you're not going to make money. But the things happen. You yeah, know, I get yeah, that. The, but that's divorces a, I, happen. I think job that's a small. Min, yeah, I think that's a small minor group, not a, a large whole. To where we're trying to, you know, we're like things like the articles that we've read and things like that. They're trying to portray that we're going to have this massive influx of of foreclosures like it's going to be 2008 and I just I, I just don't see that layout as it stands today I don't think it's gonna be like 2008 because 2008 was like anybody with a heartbeat could get a, a loan you know right stated income stated asset kind right. of stuff yeah and I don't think it's gonna be like that but you know I know that some people that are staying it saying it hey you know what it's gonna be worse than 2008 and I don't believe them either okay? I, so I don't I'm agree with you yeah but I think it's going to be bad you know, one of the things is this is going to be—it's going to be the job market. People are going to get laid off. They're not going to be able to make that car payment. You know how many people are upside down on their cars? Yeah, that's a whole different. <laughs> but, but I mean, but the that, whole thing is—you know—some people want to hold on to their cars more than they want to hold on to some other stuff. But they have to hold on to their houses, and sometimes it's just not worth it. I know, like we talked about off off the camera, two people that are going to walk away from their house. Right, but historically and i'm only speaking to our area because i don't have the data for the rest of the country mm -hmm. i can only because i kind of i pay attention to here you know historically we are hit at a historic low and we have been for a really really long time on foreclosures even after the moratorium you know because so, the forbearance program worked to get people out of foreclosure yeah, but the whole thing is, you know, these programs that the feds are coming out with in the state to help out people, I'm, there's nothing wrong with them. But, you know, you keep putting a Band-Aid on there or saying, okay, we'll take all your behind payments and we'll put it towards the back of the loan or things like that. Yeah. It, 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 come on. If, if somebody can't afford to make the payment now and you catch them up and you take those payments and you put it in, in the back of the loan, they're just going to be in the same spot six months from now. Because it's not just the mortgage payment, it's the freaking insurance, you know? Yeah, that's it's a whole different taxes. subject, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a but, totally but, different topic. It's like, but, what do you do about that? But what are you saying, people? I know people that are giving up their homes or selling them because of freaking insurance and taxes. Me, when I got my property tax bill, I was freaking pissed about it. I know, we did some videos that day. I know, it was just like, I was pissed about my, my house and then my other properties too, because yep. those aren't homesteaded because they're investment properties. But, you know, I got I got nailed on those things. For what? And the whole thing is they, they charge impact fees. I can go on the whole thing. They charge know, impact I'm, for, sorry, I'm not saying anything. They, they, <laughs> they, they, you know, they charge impact fees for all these new houses that they're building around here, but that's still not good enough. They still have to raise everybody's taxes like crazy. And I think that and for our area, that's where everybody, that was a sticking point because we do have like Pasco County where you live. Um, there and I live there are so many new developments and I mean I'm not talking like a little development here a little bit we're talking hundreds of thousands of homes 
across yeah. the entire Pasco County area. And they get them, what, 35, 40 grand a piece, roughly? Yeah. Right, and, and I'm sure they get a deal and there's other things, but yeah. that's new, and I get it, there's infrastructure, but now they're, you know, that some of that stuff's responsible responsibility of the developer, you know, but we're gonna need schools, roads, you know, that kind of stuff, and that is a responsibility of the county, which is what the impact fees go for. So why did our taxes go up? And that's what everybody was so upset about. But, but the whole thing is our taxes here Went up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And now when everybody's hurting. It went up a lot. Oh, now everybody's hurting? This is a good time right. to really wallop everybody. Right, and that's what, it's that's what I mean. It's like, I just don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, it's, it, that was, it's like, let's just kick people when they're down. And I don't understand why the county voted on that. Because we have been getting raises little by little. But over the last three, four years, I'm yeah. like, all right, it's not that bad. Okay, it's not, it's not that bad. Right. But now that insurance rates are through the roof, now that job market is falling apart, now that interest rates are really, really high, mm -hmm. now that we have shadow inventory, this is a perfect time for us to raise everybody's taxes the max we could by yeah. law. Yeah, because they did. They raised us the genius, max. Genius, genius, I tell you. Yep. All right, so we're going to not go on that subject. <laughs> we're done. There's nothing we can do about it. That Band-Aid's, we've already been walloped with that one, so we're stuck with it here, at least in, you know, Pasco. I don't know about Pinellas, but I'm sure every county's going to follow county, suit. No, I talk to people. I talk yeah. to people all over the place, but you know, but I think okay, we're in disagreement here right now. It looks on, like on shadow inventory. By I their think, definition, yeah, 100. percent I think this is going to be a huge problem with shadow inventory, and I guess we'll tell by you know the first quarter of next year. I think foreclosures are going to go through the roof. I think unemployment is going to go up. Am I being Negative? Yes, I'm being negative. You know, do I believe the real big doom and gloom that some people are projecting? No, because they've been projecting it for three, four years, saying the same thing, and eventually they will they be will. right. Yep, they will. So, and it, that's a very good point because they've been saying it so long, it kind of waters. It's like crying wolf. You say it so much, you're just like, ugh. So maybe that's what I'm listening to. There are some indicators that do have some concern, though. Rental market things of that nature, how it's shifting. That's a little convoluted here in our area, simply because we have so much new inventory coming on the market, rental inventory coming on the market. Right. But that also could be viewed as a precursor because why are the, de the developers know something, right? Like we talked about on our- And the uh, feds know days. something bad's yeah. gonna happen. That's why they cut interest rates. They didn't just say, hey, you know what? Let's just cut interest rates, even though we didn't reach the 2% mark. But We're do you two think 2% was realistic? Was yes. Knowing how they calculate that number. Well, they- With the lagging data that they have. I don't believe their numbers. I don't right. believe it's two and a half right now. I believe it's double or triple that. The reason why is it always happens a few months later, like on a Friday night, in the middle of the night, they're like, hey, you know what? We right. have to make some adjustments here. Right. That's basically it. And from what I understand, how they consider inflation is they have a bunch of people that actually go out to the stores. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but this is what I read. <laughs> they go out to the stores and they write down, oh, this bottle of wine is $10. You know, and then you go all over the country. And then this this car is this much or this, this is that much or electricity, whatever. And then they, they do it again and again and they look at the prices. And that's how they come up with the inflation numbers. Right, and an owner perceived value. Whatever, what does that mean? They call you on the phone and they say, hey, Jimmy, what do you think your house is worth? That's well, how they, that's the way I, they look I, at I it. I thought with that when it comes to housing and stuff, they go by what actually sold. They go off of the MLS and for And there's, there's, there's a owner perceived value, it's particularly with when it comes to rents as well. Oh, um, right. What do they think their house should rent for? So it's just what they want, it's more, you know, it's kind of like when we just shoot the shit. We just talk and it is what it is. You know, we all think, everybody thinks their house is worth more than it really is when it comes to the bank, you know? You so. know, everybody knows you're more positive and I'm more negative. And well, yeah. some, some people might say that because, you know, you're the realtor, you're trying to sell it, I'm the home inspector, that I'm always negative about certain things when it comes to houses. But it's just the way I really feel. And it's I still tell people to this day, don't buy a house <laughs> at right. certain times. You know, you, you know, there's that one person I'm telling, like, I don't know why, you need to wait. I just did it with another customer, and he's waiting. 
I spoke, I just spoke to one of my clients and I can't say as a home inspector, and they always ask me, would you buy this house? I know. And I can't answer that question. I know. Does this house fail? No house fails or passes. Right. I tell people that all the time. Yeah, that's not it a thing. It doesn't matter what's wrong with the house, you could fix it. Right. Each house is particular for that particular person. Right. But I really, really think that the shadow inventory, which basically is foreclosures, people on the sidelines, people on this, is going to increase inventory dramatically and it's going to force other people to walk away and the other people to lower their prices on homes. That's what I think. So if you don't have anything to add, that's today's video. Do me a favor, <laughs> consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up and share the video. It's really, really important. You have anything to add? Oh, we could go on this subject for a while. But. Because it's all speculative. So you don't think shadow inventory is going to be a problem? Well, I think we've created a new term. It's a new catch term for the, the market, the, the news media. Um, you know, that we have this, this giant pile of inventory ready to hit the market. Inventory ready to hit the market. And I think we have inventory ready to hit the market. And let's say the inventory does hit the market. Now we're gonna, so it's gonna take longer to sell people's, people, it's gonna take longer for a home to get sold because it's, all this inventory is hitting the market. So then all the buyers, so then we have shadow buyers because they're all sitting on the sidelines. Right, and I, I, I just I don't, don't see that there's just so much inventory, and it's just because there's so many people that in this country we just we're so behind in housing. Because nobody could afford to buy houses. Right, but I'm saying there, we're we're so far behind in housing. Period, for the amount of human beings that are in this country to the amount of structures but, but, that we have. But we've always been behind on when you come human beings to houses. You know, buying houses is not cheap. Right, but I've said it's the but there's data on this stuff and we've been behind for a really long time you know early even before you know we were kind of starting to catch up but we're way 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 behind that's why i just don't see that we're going to have this mass like flood of inventory come to the market like like it's just going to be this well, thing i just see, don't let's see it. let's see what happens i think there's gonna be a massive Blood hit the market. Uh, just I disagree. Like that. Yeah, it's not. And, be. and I also think that it's a buyer's market now. Well, it has been for a while. We've talked about that before. No, we were talking about buyer's market for condos. Now I think it's a buyer's market for houses too. Eh, depends. You've got more leverage now, 100%. Like, and I think it's really a buyer's do. market for new construction too. Oh, that's been for the last 10 months at least. Yeah. So even I mean, probably longer, to be honest. For the new construction, we thought, I know we did a video on that before. We'll do a follow up on yeah. this one in a few months. Yeah. We'll see what happens. All right, that's today's video. Like I said, do me a favor, subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you in the next one.